Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for your patience and, and waiting um, so, so wonderfully um, as we're able to post this. We're picking right back up where we left off. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about the book, we, The Game of Life, and how, the book, We Got Game. <laughs> the book, The Game of <laughs> Life, and how to play it. Um, this is the book that we're studying. We're not doing a traditional service on Sundays, but we are going chapter by chapter, line by line. And so we encourage you to um, use the link that's here in the post to um, get a copy of the book so that you can can follow along week by week. Um, we'll talk about it more in class, but I think it's important also to remember, because we're going chapter by chapter, please don't skip ahead, mm -hmm. right? Just read each chapter. If you feel like you want more, reread what you just read. Absolutely. We're trying to make sure that we integrate what we learn and not just speed read. I know in our, in our time, in our day and age, we try to rush through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's beautiful to be able to slow down and have the support of us guiding you chapter by chapter, mm -hmm. line by line, mm -hmm. so that if you have questions mm -hmm. or also helping you to think critically about what you're reading, applying it to your life as you're moving through it, it's, it just supports you in, in learning and integrating it so much more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, the link is here in the post. Please grab it. Uh, you can get any version of the game of life and how to play it that you desire. Mm -hmm. um, it's in public domain. Again, we just want to make sure that you actually have the book uh, so that you can read and study along in real time on Sundays, but mm -hmm. also read and study throughout the week. And so now it is time for meditation mm -hmm. and PY will lead us and guide us into the good. Yes, yes. It's so interesting that experiences happen, but how do we handle them? How do we remember the truth no matter what is going on, whether we are physically connected to the internet or not, whether we um, have all the answers or not. This month we've been talking about and will continue to talk about three words, all is well. All is well in my mind, all is wor well in my world, and all is well because I know what I'm connected to. Those three simple words allow us to take our focus off of what we see on the outside and bring it back to the inside, the internal experience. And as I like to say, you can read all kinds of text, memorize all kinds of affirmations, but until you have felt God alive within you, all you have is information. And while we appreciate and enjoy information, we want you to know God for yourself because you feel God alive within you. And one of the best ways to feel God alive within you is with meditation, is with shutting the external world out and reconnecting to the internal. Maybe feeling the body relax and knowing that all is well. So we experience the connection of God and we experience the words revitalized within us, all is well. So wherever you are right now in this present moment, go ahead, look around the room. Notice that you are in a safe place and go ahead and get comfortable. Allow your shoulders to align over your hips. Allow your arms to rest either palms turned down or up and allow the breath to settle. And as you look around the room one more time, remind yourself that right where you sit, God is and all is well. So let's close our eyes together now. And as we close our eyes, that simple act of softening our gaze of relaxing our eyelids, sends a signal to the rest of our body. There's nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about, all is well. And with our eyes closed, we take the natural journey inward, the natural loving journey inward, 
the natural easy journey inward to the seat of all is well. And so with our eyes closed, let's just notice the breath right where it is. No judgment of it if it's feeling deep or if it's feeling short or shallow. Let's just notice that it is moving that whether it appears to be elongated or short, where we are now with the breath, it is moving and we are in gratitude. Let's just notice the breath for a few rounds and enjoy each round, relaxing us more, taking us deeper and reminding us that all is well. Last round here of noticing. And now, together, let's take conscious control of the breath because it is ours to do so. It is ours to use the power to guide the breath wherever we choose. It is ours to remember and use. So sending the breath into the low belly. Inhale, and as we inhale, we expand the low belly. So inhale, count to four. Hold it there, count to four. Open the mouth, relax the jaw, and release nice and easy. Count to four. Again, inhale into the low belly. Inhale, expand the low belly. Hold it there, count to four. And open the mouth, sigh it out, release it, count to four. And let's take that breath, expanding into the low belly now, up through the rib cage. Breath traveling up, expanding the front and the sides and the back of the body. Hold it there, count to four. And side out, relax the jaw. Same path, but allowing more breath in through the low belly, up through the rib cage, expanding, making room, sending it into places that appeared to be blocked. Hold it there. And sigh it out. In through the low belly, up through the rib cage, now up to the heart, center of the chest. Let that altar to love expand and open. Hold it there. And release. Beautiful. Again, in through the low belly, up through the heart. Expanding across the chest, across the back. If you're holding any tension, make room for breath. Hold it there. And release into this now moment of all this well. Let's practice a few rounds of breath all the way in and up. Hold it at the top. Close the lips and exhale through the nose. Nice and easy breath. Nice, easy, effortless breath. 
Let's take a few rounds here. And as we breathe in and out, we remember that all is well. Our breath has been flowing this whole time. No matter what happens in our world, we are connected to God and all is well. Last round of in and out through the nose. And let's take that breath together and send it into the feet. If you've been holding any tension in the feet, gripping, holding on, maybe wiggle the toes, raise the heels, whatever you need to do. Send the breath there. Relax the feet now. Energy gathered beneath the feet that grounds us and connects us to the earth beneath, to Mother Earth. Let that energy now flow up through the ankles. Relax the ankles. Our shins and our calves make room as we send energy flowing upward. Relax the shins and the calves. Energy flows across our knees. We surrender, we allow, and we relax the knees. On a clear path, energy flows across the thighs, the hamstrings, and the glutes. We permit and allow all is well to enter our body. Relax the thighs, the hamstrings, and the glutes. Beautiful, and now we allow that energy that is gathered in the hips, our seat of joy, our opening to more creativity, more aliveness, more all as well. Relax the hips. And so now the energy that is gathered at the base of our spine, in our mind we see it, we imagine those energy centers as the energy flows up, 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 and now out the crown of your head. A clear channel for all is well to rise. A clear channel for all is well to connect us one to another. A clear channel to receive all that we need right here and now. And in our mind, as we see this energy and as we feel it gathered so beautifully above us, we permit and allow it to flow now back down through the crown, balancing our third eye, our wisdom, opening our throat to speak words and to know and affirm all is well across our shoulders and down our arms. We relax the shoulders and permit that energy flowing out the fingertips. And we see ourselves as a completely open channel for good, for God, for all as well. As we prepare for our silent time, Scan your body. Notice if you're holding any tension in your shoulders or anywhere. Send the breath there. Send love there. You may turn the palms down to ground yourself more, or you may turn the palms up to receive. Whichever you choose, let's settle in now. Take this inward journey I will monitor the time. The next time you hear my voice, it will be to gently bring you back. And you come back knowing all is well. So let's experience the connection, the knowing, 
the truth now. with our eyes still closed. We notice how good it feels to be connected to God. And on this day, connected to the energy of the mother of the feminine, to be connected to our mothers and grandmothers, our ancestors, whether they are in the physical or the eternal. Feel that energy that always reminds us that all is well. That wherever we are in our experience, we are not alone. We are guided, we are nurtured, we are loved, and all is well. Let's bring that energy back with us as we slowly begin to wake the body Maybe you wiggle the fingers, maybe you wiggle the toes, but the eyes remain closed. No rush. Whatever you choose, just go ahead. If the palms have been turned up, turn them down, making contact with the tops of the thighs. Maybe rubbing the thighs and the knees to gently signal that we love our body and we want to wake it. We want to align with it. We want to feel that energy of peace and ease flowing through it. Stop the movement. Plant the palms on the tops of the thighs. Inhale. Draw the shoulders up by the ears. You feel a slight elongation of the spine. Shoulders back, release the breath and allow the shoulders to release nice and easy down. Inhale, draw the shoulders up by the ears. Full breath. Shoulders back, release the breath. Allow the shoulders to relax nice and easy. Last time, inhale. Shoulders up and back. Release the breath, relax the shoulders. Allow your system to settle and bring palms together, heart center. Nice and easy, relaxing the chin towards the fingertips. Pausing, giving honor and thanks, experiencing gratitude for our connection that can never be severed. Remembering that wherever we are, God is and all is well. 
remembering that we could not be more worthy or more loved by God. And giving permission for life to flow nice and easy. Slowly flutter the eyes open. Nice soft gaze. No strain. Inhale, raise the chin, raise the gaze. Release the breath. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, P.Y. You're welcome. Uh, so uh, we are in the next chapter mm -hmm. of um, uh, the game of life and how to play it. I keep wanting to say we, we got, got game. game. <laughs> but we are in the next chapter of the We Got Game class, mm -hmm. um, the game of life and how to play it. And so we're going to um, just, just jump right in. Um, we do have one question, which I will read in a minute. Um, and that question actually um, is partially answered in this chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll share the question. Um, we can talk about it a little bit, and then I think it would be great to, um, um, as we get to that place in the chapter, mm -hmm. then we can, we can dig in a little bit more. Um, so this question says, how do we effectively use the be like water, non-resistant style of communicating in the parent-child relationship? Children often do the opposite <laughs> of what we want for them to do. Actually, um, he is not a child anymore. Um, the person, mm. I guess, is talking about their, their grown child. Mm -hmm. um, but still, um, uh, with today's child, um, they're not wanting to take directives from adults. So how do we um, operate in that? So again, in this chapter, and, and hopefully you read this chapter and you see that um, Florence Goble Shin speaks to this, but um, here, here's where we, where we begin. So. Um, one of the things as parents that we have to actually be mindful of um, and always bring our minds and attention to is that um, uh, we don't know everything, <laughs> right? And, and what do I mean by that? It, I was reflecting on it this morning. It's Mother's Day, and um, normally on Mother's Day, we do um, the baby blessings, and we look forward to doing that next year when we're in, we're in person. Um, but we share um, the wisdom of Khalil Gibran when he talks about children, right? And so um, we have to remember that they're not our own, right? We have to remember that um, they're in our care for a specific amount of time, and, and definitely at the point that they're adults, they're really not our own. Um, and so the same source, the same God, the same love that you trust and that allows you to make mistakes, mm -hmm. right, um, without, you know, necessarily detrimental effects, right? Um, the same God that um, guides you through danger seen and unseen, right, is the same power um, that you must trust in as a parent. So that's where it starts, right? Mm -hmm. that, like, that's really where it starts. You want to talk about be like water and, and non-resistant um, is, is trusting source. And then trusting if there's something that you need to say or do or lead or guide, then you're surrendering to the voice of, of God, the voice of love to speak through you and to guide you, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes what that means is taking a pause. Like Lord knows as a parent, one of the easiest things to do is just like, okay, I think I know what needs to happen here. I'm upset about something, you know, let me stop and take a breath, right? Sometimes it's also ending with um, the reality that, you know what, um, they're taken care of no matter what. I know that they're in the hands of God. I trust, you know, I trust God in this situation, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have, have any? Well, you know, the other part of this is, right, we're not saying that you let your child run in the street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? If you notice danger, if there's clear and present danger, of course you would step in and do the thing that a child obviously wouldn't know to do. Mm -hmm. But if we, as we move into our children growing up and advancing in their own life, their own path, first we must remember that they do have their own path. Yes. Second, it goes to what PG was saying about surrendering and allowing God to speak to us and speak through us. 
if you're giving permission to, for God to speak, sometimes that stepping back and that breath really is you tuning in and using what we call the miracle worker's prayer. Mm -hmm. Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And to whom would you have me say it? In this case, you're talking about your child. But by simply asking those love-based questions of God, you're giving permission for a higher wisdom to enter the situation. You're giving permission for love to speak. You're giving permission for you to experience the benefit of the same information. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think we have the answers, but the answers have to come to us and through us. Mm -hmm. And so that's what asking those or saying that miracle worker's prayer it comes from A Curse and Miracles. It's what we call the miracle worker's prayer. Simply asking those questions. Mm -hmm. Before you speak, when you're taking that breath in your mind, it's just a nice little signal that I'm here for answers as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised. Sometimes the answers that you receive are not the answers that you yourself would have given. Right. But they are exactly what need to be said. Right, right, right. And, you know, as parents, we have to learn um, that we don't actually have the level of control we think we have, mm -hmm. right? And actually trying to control another human mm -hmm. um, isn't actually a good thing for their growth and development um, if we want them to become responsible, independent adults, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so it is important when we really put our hearts and our minds on all of the things that we can't control, all of the ways that, you know, unfortunately, we're not fully able to protect our kids, right? Mm -hmm. So there must be something that we trust in, right? There must be something that we're leaning in, leaning on. Uh, and this is you know, a lot of what Florence Goebel Shin has really been inviting us to, to think about, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about one power, is there, am I believing in one or two powers, mm -hmm. right? Because, and, and she talked about it in the last um, chapter, we'll talk about it in this chapter as well. Many times parents are imagining the worst case scenario for their children, mm -hmm. right? So in, in that be like water, um, uh, non-resistant space, f check in with yourself. Like, are you imagining the worst case scenario? Is this the only way that this can play out? Mm -hmm. Right. And if there are alternatives, then that means you need to step back. Right. Right. You need to step back. It's, it's, it's so very important, you know, and, and as metaphysicians, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get ahead of myself because yeah. in the chapter she speaks to that. Like we're responsible for the knowledge that we have. Mm -hmm. Right. And we under, when we understand how principle works and we're using principle and we're using the law of attraction and using these things to manifest all of this good, mm -hmm. then we're responsible for this uh, in the same way. We can't imagine the worst case scenario for our children. Right. We have to be operating. Well, we can't imagine. Well, it, but right. Right. The better option, the right. better use of imagination is to mm -hmm. imagine the best mm -hmm. case scenario. Yeah. 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 So um, let's get in the chapter because, like I said, all of these things really, mm -hmm. really play into to what the chapter is about. Um, and then we can go from there. Um, so one of the first things that I, I want to say here <coughs> as it relates to this chapter is, oh, hold on, I just got ahead of this. Here we go. So this chapter is called The Law of Karma and the Law of Forgiveness. The first thing that I want to say, mm -hmm. um, because this word karma can be loaded, I would just put a note here and call it the law of cause and effect mm -hmm. or the law of causation or the law of causality mm -hmm. <laughs> and the law of forgiveness, right? Um, we're going to we'll read in a second. She gives a definition for um, karma um, that actually isn't accurate. So we'll deal with that in a second. So let's read this. Um, Humanity receives only that which we give. The game of life is a game of boomerangs. Our thoughts, deeds, and words return to us sooner or later with astounding accuracy. This is the law of karma, which is Sanskrit for comeback. Whatsoever a person or a man, she's quoting the scripture, a man soweth that shall he also reap. Now, in truth, the word, and, and I have the note here, but the word karma um, the, it's the root word in Sanskrit is karman, mm -hmm. right? And it means act, action, or deed, right? So the law of, of karma, when we're talking about someone's, uh, talking about karma, we're talking about act, action, or deed, which makes sense in the context of how she's using the scripture, right? Mm -hmm. That there's an, there's, you sow something, you sow an apple seed, right? And there's an act, an action, or deed as a result of that, mm -hmm. right? An apple tree. Right. Um, so 
this is what karma it's it's not comeback right i i, I don't know where she got this like, definition from what does that, mean? that it's, sounds it's, a little anyway <laughs> it's very interesting again i don't know where she, where she got it okay. from and you know it's all good it, it doesn't doesn't really matter absolutely and she's not the only one that thinks maybe not uses the word comeback but thinks about it just happening to me and, mm-hmm. and all those kinds of things so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's it's it, it, it's not accurate but it is her interpretation of what it is yeah so karma act action or deed Mm -hmm. and this becomes very important later when we understand that all karma is is an out picturing its law at work Mm -hmm. right and so there's always an act action or deed in other words and this is why she says in the beginning right that um everything returns to us uh, sooner or later right and this is very important particularly when we're sowing those seeds of affirmation and knowing all is well and, mm-hmm. and and thinking that life will is working out for us and all of that and we're not seeing it right when we understand that um, in truth there's always an act action or deed we can rest in the assurance mm-hmm. that the law is responding that the law is working well and you think about the way most people use many of the laws they use them um, to frighten people into behaving mm-hmm. And so what many people have been conditioned to believe is that, oh, I've got to behave or what I do if it's it's detrimental to someone else will come back to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's also reinforcing the idea of a punishing world environment God. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what this is about. Mm -mm. If there's only one mind and in Mm -hmm. truth, if there's only one of us here, Mm -hmm. what goes out, we also have to experience it. We see it from both sides. That's all that it is. Right. And right. it is true that if what you are sowing mm-hmm. is poison, you cannot reap goodness. Right. So that's true. But it's not doing that as a punishment. It's just doing that because that's the way the reflection is. That's right. the way oneness works. Mm-hmm. What I experience, someone else experiences. What they experience, I experience. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing it is. Absolutely. And so it takes the charge out of the word. And if we're honest, many of us have used the word karma to get back at people that we want something bad to happen to. Mm-hmm. Your karma gonna come back and get you. And that's not what this is happening Mm-mm. Mm-mm. at all. Mm-mm. And and I think it's and then important to remember that we're because we're talking about cause and effect, we can use this language in an affirmative, constructive mm-hmm. way, which we generally tend not to do. Mm-mm. Right, we don't think about oh my karma is quote unquote coming back to me. Right, my right. goodness is right. coming back right. to right. me. Right, exactly, exactly. My love, my right. my compassion, right. my joy right. is coming back to me. We right. never say that. Right, right. it's always in the, in the negative. It's mm-hmm. always as a punishment. Mm-hmm. Right, it's always to keep us in fear. It's right. always something that we're judging someone else for. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. karma gonna come back to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. What about? All that love that you are is going to come back to you. All your creativity is coming back to you. All of your connection is coming back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is how we understand law, right? How we're understanding we're working with spiritual law, metaphysical law, natural law, Mm -hmm. right? That it there's there's two sides to it right and so unfortunately right this word karma has been used as simply a negative word um so that's why we're going to just talk cause and effect Mm -hmm. right causation causality yeah so she goes on she tells a lot of stories in this chapter (laughs) a friend told me the story of herself illustrating the law she said i make all of my cause and effect on my aunt whatever i say to her someone says to me i am often irritable at home and one day said to my aunt aunt who was talking to me during dinner, no more talk. I wish to eat in peace. (laughs) The following day, I was lunching with a woman with whom I wish to make a great impression. I was talking animatedly when she said, no more talk. I wish to eat in peace. My friend is high in consciousness, so her cause and effect returns much more quickly than to one on the mental plane. The more one knows, the more she or he or they are responsible, and a person with a knowledge of spiritual law, which they do not practice, suffers greatly in consequence. Now let's talk about that suffers greatly, but it, go me, ahead, go let me ahead. Let finish this. Uh-huh. The fear of the Lord or the law is the beginning of wisdom. If we read the word Lord, law, it will make many passages in the Bible much clearer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this <laughs> is, yeah, this is, this is an important piece, right? And this is, again, we're talking about how the law works, right? And so when we read words like Um, suffering great consequence, right? This is not in the sense of some being um, um, meeting out some type of justice, Mm -hmm. right? If you have, you know, if you are adding two plus two and you're constantly making it five, right? 
you, you're 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 going to constantly be wrong. You're going to be incorrect, right? And that could you know distort measurements. All mm-hmm. sorts of things Make could you happen because you're still adding two plus two, and you're saying it's five, and things aren't adding up, mm-hmm. right? And so that's really what this is about, right? That a, a, a person who does not hadn't learned mathematics yet. And, and was operating in that place um, would not necessarily experience this, the same effects, right? So let's change that word consequence to effect, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so it is important, as, as we spoke of earlier in the context of asking about children, right? We are metaphysicians. We are practicing law. We are making use of law. We are studying law. It is important. We are, to whom much is given, much is required. We are responsible for what we now know, Mm -hmm. right? You can't, we can't play ignorant, right? And we also can't, we can't play ignorant in the sense of, oh, well, I'm just using this over here to get money, house, cars, and lovers. Right. You can't manipulate the law. I mean, you can try. Right. If you believe and know the law works, the law works. It works. (laughs) And it says with accuracy. Right. Outstanding. Right. Accuracy. Right. And so then we understand, and as she invites us to reread, to hear these scriptures differently, right? Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the law. It is the law which takes vengeance, not God. God sees us perfect, created in its likeness and image, imagination, and given power and dominion. So again, it's the law that always um, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> returns back to us what we deposit, mm-hmm. right? And it's just, it, it works with me- mechanical accuracy. Um, it is neutral, um, but also it doesn't leave anything out. Now, what's beautiful, and we talked about it in the previous chapter, and we'll talk about it some more, remember, we can transmute and change anything. So this is where the law of forgiveness comes in, mm-hmm. right? So we do not have to live in fear like, oh, Lord, um, I cussed that person out and I knew I shouldn't have cussed them out, (laughs) right? I don't want somebody coming at me, right? Because actually that awareness, then you can apply the law of forgiveness um, and you can actually change and transmute that that situation. Mm -hmm. It's the equivalent of, oh no, I planted orange seeds and I wanted apple, plant apple seeds, right? You literally can dig them up, right? You literally can pull them from the root. You don't have to just continue to, oh no, I put, I I planted this. I guess I need to water it. I guess I need to continue to let it be. And Mm -hmm. I guess I got to eat these oranges now because I made my bed and I have to lay in it. Right. What's beautiful when we understand spiritual law is no. The second that you're aware that you've planted something unwanted, that you planted something unintended, Mm -hmm. then you have the opportunity um, to to uproot those things and plant something new. And what you also uproot is the belief underneath the behavior. Mm hmm. Because if, if the energy is, I need to cuss this person out, then that energy is a disconnect from mm-hmm. the source and the truth of you. Mm-hmm. And what is really the beliefs by, behind it? Because you don't want to just plant new seeds in, in ground that is not fertile. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to look at those beliefs as well. Mm-hmm. What was I believing was happening? Right. What did I think was going to happen as a result of this interaction with this person? Yeah. What was my interpretation of what was said to me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of it. All of that. Right. And so that's how we heal. That's how we heal. She goes on. This is the perfect idea of humanity registered in divine mind, awaiting our recognition. For we can only be what we see ourselves to be and only attain what we see ourselves attaining. Nothing ever happens without an onlooker is an ancient saying. Uh, we see first um, our failure or success, our joy or sorrow, before it swings into visibility from the scene set in our own imagination. We have observed this in the mother picturing disease for her child or a woman seeing success for her husband. Right. So this is, again, very important. She's constantly bringing us back to understanding how the game of life works, mm-hmm. right, that we have to see our success before we actually experience it, our joy before we actually experience it. It swings into visibility from the scene set in our own imagination, image nation, <laughs> imaging faculty, right? Mm-hmm. It has to be imaged in mm-hmm. our minds first, right? And so this is why we see this, right? Sometimes as parents, when, we, when we're operating, we want to operate in non-resistance, but what we're actually doing is we're picturing the worst mm-hmm. outcome for our children. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, or even or for for our, our lovers, our friends, our spouse, we're picturing the worst outcome for ourselves. Yeah. Right. 
And so this is where we understand how we make use of the law. Jesus Christ said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we see freedom from all unhappy conditions comes through knowledge, a knowledge of spiritual law. Mm -hmm. Obedience precedes authority, and the law obeys us when we obey the law. It's a deep statement. Obedience precedes authority, and the law obeys, um, obeys us when we obey the law. Right. And so what is he saying there? Right. When we think about authority, we want to walk in authority in our lives. We want to walk uh, in a commanding fashion um, that we can speak these things, dec decree and declare a thing um, and it shall be. But in order for us to actually walk in authority in our lives, in order for us to walk in mastery in our lives, we have to uh, understand um, how the law works mm -hmm. and align with that work with the law that's another way of saying obedience right um, working with the law mm -hmm. um, that's what then gives us authority right and then the law works with us responds to us easily and effortlessly mm -hmm. easily and effortlessly the law of electricity i love she uses this example must be obeyed before it becomes our servant Right. We have to actually understand obey and it. understand. Right. Mm -hmm. And know that there's some things we can do with this electricity that, that that'll leave us dead. Right? And so we have to understand those parameters. Mm -hmm. Once we understand those parameters, the world is ours. Mm -hmm. All of the things that we can electrify. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Right. But when handled ignorantly, it becomes our deadly flow. Mm -hmm. So with the laws of mind. Right. None of us would ever say um, yeah, you know, that electricity just didn't like her. I guess that's right. why, right? You know, that that, yeah, that lightning that bolt must not have liked her. Right. Right? We, we understand that it's not personal. If she had been better to me, she wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Right, if she had been a kinder person or a nicer person. Or... Electricity would have worked for her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know that's not how it works. And so it's important for us to understand that this is the same with spiritual law. Exactly the same. And so this is where what's rooted in when we read these scriptures and we're, you know, we're reading ancient words and ancient understandings, you know, the fear of the Lord, right? The, the fear of the law, right? It's respect. Right. And it's also a disconnection from the truth, like mm -hmm. the fear of the law. We don't mm -hmm. understand the law. We're not connected to the law. Right, right, right. And so it is important that we have, and this is why we study earnestly and we learn and we mm -hmm. read and we reread. All of that is inherent in this respect so that we can make use of it mm -hmm. and work with it in the same way that other humans have done on our behalf so that we can work with electricity right, right and, and make use of and it. And we don't make the laws do what they were not designed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't try to manipulate and control. We, we work with the law. Mm-hmm. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. For example, a woman with a strong personal will wished she owned a house which belonged to an acquaintance, and she often made mental pictures of herself living in the house. In the course of time, the man died and she moved into the house. Several years afterwards, coming into the knowledge of spiritual law, she said to me, do you think I had anything to do with that man's death? I replied, yes, your desire was so strong, everything made way for it, but you paid your karmic debt uh, or your cause and effect debt or cause and effect showed up in your life. Your husband, whom you loved devotedly, died soon, and the house was a white elephant on your hands for years. The original owner, however, could not have been affected by her thoughts had he been positive in the truth, nor her husband, but they were both under karmic law or cause and effect. The woman should have said, feeling the great desire for the house, infinite intelligent, give me the right house, equally as charming as this, the house which is mine by divine right. So let's unpack this mm -hmm. because Florence Govel Shin, um, you know, in saying yes, um, she's also understanding a, a couple of things. Right. So the yes is not singular in the sense that this woman single handedly right. killed this man and then killed this her husband. Right. As a result of her desire. Um, one of the things that's very important and I'm so happy that she says this here is to understand that. Um, you cannot actually create in a person's life, right? But a person can be receptive to what it is um, that, that you are also believing, right? There was a vibrational match. Somewhere he believed that maybe somebody was trying to get his house or 
um, or he had some other other beliefs around dying early. Right, um, and they just all aligned that together. Aligned. Yeah, that aligned, right? So it is not that this person caused it. And this is also important when we think about superstition, right? Because all of the superstitions are rooted in um, my acceptance and belief in it. Right? Mm-hmm. I have to believe it. I have to believe it has power. Mm-hmm. I have to believe it works um, in order for that to have power over me. Right. So, um, you know, someone can speak curses and incantations over my life. Um, but if I'm living in the consciousness that all is well, if I'm living in the consciousness that I'm guided and, and protected. Right. There. This is you know, this is what's rooted in that idea of no weapon formed against me shall prosper, Mm -hmm. right? But you have to be first establish that in your own mind and consciousness, right? Because there may be weapons that form, there may, could be someone that's in this case, one in your home, right? But you just recognize that um, those those forms, those things that are formed, those thoughts that are are sent um, do not have to have any power in your life. On the other side, and this is the way belief works, and this is the way healing and and most healings work, um, it is about the belief. We see so often in in almost every healing story of Jesus, he asks a question, right? Do you believe that I can make you whole, Mm -hmm. right? Um, That you can be made whole. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was out of that, I'm thinking, it's a story of the the, the two uh, blind men. Um, And they were like, yes. And and so it is done unto you as you believe, Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, by the power in me, as me, and my greatness, I now heal you. No, that's not what happened, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is where we recognize that this is really what's going on, and this is what's rooted in what she's saying. Now, the other bit of this, which I think is important, is she also talks about um, the, the thing that the woman could have said, understanding that, okay, you see a house that you like, you know, and it ain't mm-hmm. yours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Infinite intelligence, give me the right house. Equally as charming as this, the house which is mine by divine right. Right. We see things all the time mm-hmm. in our lives and in our world that then spark a desire. Right. Um, but it's important for us to understand that we want what is ours by divine right. Right. And that we tap into what's really underneath that desire. There's nothing wrong with desire. Mm-hmm. But what is that desire pointing to? What mm-hmm. is that thing that is represented in front of you, mm-hmm. making you realize that is within you that mm-hmm. is really what you want? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we don't get upset that we have a desire. I see beautiful things all the time that signal something in me, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't necessarily say, I want theirs. I want mine. Right, right. What about that is, is drawing me to it? That's what I want. Mm-hmm. I get inspired ideas for design all the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, that. I like that. I store that in my mental Rolodex. If you're Abraham, you put that in your vortex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying give me hers because what we understand is there is infinite supply. Mm -hmm. My awareness has been drawn to something I desire. There must be an equivalent for me. Yep, yep. That comes to me easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. If I'm in worry, fear, or doubt about it or coveting, Mm-hmm. someone else's, mm-hmm. then what's mine by divine right cannot come to me. Exactly. And so ultimately, that's the stuff that was behind her desire. Mm-hmm. And so cause and effect, there had to be an effect, right? And this is what I talk often in, in classes and, and with the manifestation equation. We look at the effect because that really tells us something about the content of what was in our mind mm-hmm. um, when we were thinking, desiring, expecting, creating, wishing for it, right? And so we can see that, you know, Florence Goble Shin puts it in this way that you paid your karmic debt. But what we can understand is that if, if these things outpictured, then we have to know that there were some things in her consciousness um, underneath this desire, mm-hmm. right? And so there must be an effect. Right, and the things underneath her desire weren't in alignment with the truth of her, Mm -hmm. right? They were in alignment with the worry, the fear, the doubt, the unworthiness, Mm -hmm. all of those things. And Mm -hmm. that's what was shown to her. That's what she experienced. Yeah. Yeah. We move forward. Right. She might have even had the belief that I, anything good comes to me, something bad happens. Exactly. So there's One a whole, day the bottle will drop out. All, all of that. kinds all of, of that. All kinds of reasons. I, you know, Florence Global Shannon is like, like, yes and no. She's like, yes, no. But <laughs> <laughs> when you start to think about it, there's all kinds of beliefs that are being consistently um, held on to, mm-hmm. imagined, 
mm-hmm. that end up out picturing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. The divine selection would have given perfect satisfaction and brought good to all. The divine pattern is the safe pattern to work by. The desire is a tremendous force and must be directed in the right channels or chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. And demonstrating the most important step is the first step, to ask a right. We should always demand only that which is by our divine right. I thought this was interesting because she, when you hear certain words, and I don't know if y'all heard this, the most important step is the first step, to ask. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. There's a New York Times bestselling book called Ask and It Is Given. And it talks about four steps. Mm -hmm. It says the first step is to ask. (laughs) Right? So, you know, Esther and Jerry Hicks, Abraham, it's all the same Mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Right? This is important. It's important to understand. Right? Truth is truth is true. It's true is true. Mm -hmm. Read what books you want to read. Study what teachers you want to study. But we love to to bring it to this this place of synthesis to understand Mm -hmm. how, you know, it's the same thing being said and being taught. It didn't say plead either. Right. It said ask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It didn't say beg. It said mm-hmm. ask. And demand, right? right? We should always demand only that which is by our divine right. Right. Mm-hmm. So to go back to the illustration, had the woman taken this attitude, if this house I desire is mine, I cannot lose it. If it is not, give me its equivalent. The man might have decided to move out harmoniously had it been the divine selection for her or another house would have been substituted. Anything forced <clears throat> into manifestation through personal will is always ill got and ever bad and has ever bad success. Um, I think this is important to highlight and understand. Um, I'm sure many of us have experienced this. Um, you've uh, come into these teachings, you learned about the law of attraction, you watched the secret, you started doing stuff and you started reading and then you started manifesting. But anything that is forced into manifestation through personal will ultimately doesn't last. Right, because the, what's underneath it is mm-hmm. the problem. Mm-hmm. 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 The truth is you don't believe you can have it or hold it. Mm-hmm. And that's what manifests ultimately. Right, right. And so this is why the work that we must do on our consciousness has to be in this level of, of uh, our worthiness, mm-hmm. right, of, of knowing our true relationship to God, knowing that God sees us perfect, whole, and complete, is never judging us, removing guilt and shame, Mm -hmm. healing trauma, healing all stories, right? So that then that which we are manifesting one, it's not of our, out of our personal will, right? Because we're trusting and leaning and understanding that there's something operating in through and as us. And so we get to rest and relax um, in a way that most of us don't. And this is why I say, going back to the first week, this is when you start to learn that you don't have to make lists and you don't have to, you know, treat the universe, treat God like Santa mm-hmm. Claus, mm-hmm. right? All of that is still rooted in personal will, mm-hmm. right? Which will have its own effects that are very clear. Yeah, and it's so interesting. We see it a lot where people are just forcing and trying and manipulating. That is slightly better than feeling Mm -hmm. like the world is coming down on me Mm -hmm. and being victimized. Mm -hmm. But that's not the end. Mm -mm. That's just a stage Mm -mm. where you realize, oh, I have power and let me wield it. Mm -hmm. The next thing is I remember I have power and let it move through me. Yes, yes. Then I remember there is power as me. Mm-hmm. And so you just live differently. Mm-hmm. It's not that you don't notice things, Mm-mm. but have you ever noticed how quickly things come when you don't hold on to how they're supposed to get there, when they're supposed to show up? Or, right. you, know, you know, I've done that so many times. Mm-hmm. I'll have a passing thought and the next mm-hmm. thing there it is. Mm-hmm because there was no resistance. Mm -hmm. I was actually just, I had no thoughts about how it was gonna come, my worthiness around it. Mm -hmm. I just had the thought Mm -hmm. and there it was. Right, right. Humanity is admonished, my will be done, not thine. And the curious thing is that humans always get just what we desire when, um, when we, when we relinquish personal will, thereby enabling infinite intelligence to work through them. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the law. Mm-hmm. Right? This is wisdom right here, y'all. This mm-hmm. is wisdom. Mm-hmm. Right? That actually the way it works is not my will. Right? And we allow infinite intelligence to work through of us. We stand still. We get still and let God love us. Mm-hmm. Right? And then we see miracles and answer prayers. But right? that requires you to have 
not only an awareness of these laws mm -hmm. and teachings, but to believe they work. Mm -hmm. Put them into practice. Live them. Right. This is thy will be done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand right here and mm -hmm. let thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And so as parents, this becomes very important. For example, a woman came to me in great distress. Her daughter had determined to take a very hazardous trip. Y'all know what this is like. And the mother was filled with fear. <laughs> she said she had used every argument, had pointed out the dangers to be encountered and forbidden her to go. But the daughter became more and more rebellious and determined. What we resist persists. I said to the mother, mm -hmm. you are forcing your personal will upon your daughter, which you have no right to do. And your fear of the trip is only attracting it. For we attract what we fear, I added. Let go and take your mental hands off. Put it in God's hands and use this statement. I put this situation in the hands of infinite love and wisdom. If this trip is a divine plan, I bless it and no longer resist. But if it, if it is not divinely planned, I give thanks that it is now dissolved and dissipated. After a day, a day or two after that, her daughter said to her, Mother, I have given up the trip and the situation returned to its native nothingness. Mm -hmm. It is learning to stand still, which seems so difficult for humanity. I will deal more fully with this in the law, in the chapter on non-resistance, right? even more. Right? We talked about it last week, but this is it. Right? This is it. I also said last week, you know, Florence Goebel Shen inspired, I bless it. And, and, you know, here we have it, right? Here we hear it. Again, that's the energy and the consciousness that we must learn to live in. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not saying do nothing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What we are doing is the mental work. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not saying I'm just going to lay in, in my house and not go out. Mm -hmm. and this. It's saying I'm doing the mental work mm -hmm. to remove the blocks mm -hmm. in my awareness to love's mm -hmm. presence, to mm -hmm. remove, to unpack, to mm -hmm. let go of, to undo the conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing something. Right. Because we're not physically putting our hand at our body somewhere, we mm -hmm. think we're not doing anything. Right. But the mental work is the work. Yeah. Say it all the time. That's the work. That's the work. Mm -hmm. And in truth, it feels the hardest to do because it's all about us. Mm -hmm. It's all about us tapping into. It's all about us becoming aware. Mm -hmm. It's about us releasing. It's about us forgiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gotta take mental action. We gotta take spiritual action. And, and I, then you'll be led to the, to the action in the world. Yeah, yeah. And I love you know, this idea of um, you know, if this trip is the divine plan, I bless it and no longer resist. That's again putting us into the realm of understanding. We don't have all the information. Mm -hmm. We again, we are looking at this mother is looking at one possible scenario, mm -hmm. not even considering that it is possible that this trip could be safe and her daughter could be fine and she could have a wonderful time. That's equally possible. This is again right. faith or fear. Right. But either way, you're believing in an unknown that has yet to occur. Or that her daughter could come to the decision that she don't want to go anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't even, we, we, we're mm -hmm. like, okay, she's going to do this, and this is going to happen, and this mm -hmm. is going to happen, and this is going to mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. And we never just step back and be like, okay, I don't know everything. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I might be based on what I think is going to happen on what happened to me. Exactly. Which means we got something to heal. Which means <laughs> we got something to right. heal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And so this is this is what allows us to take a breath. Uh, if it, I bless it, I no longer resist. But if it is not divinely planned, then I give thanks. What? That it is now dissolved and dissipated. Mm -hmm. Right. Never to return. Never to return. <laughs> and what happened? Right. She 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 changed her mind. She gave up on the trip. Part of that is just the energetic. I, I really think that when we think about what we're talking about, the law of cause and effect, mm -hmm. as soon as the mother planted something different, right, the act or deed was different, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as she said, I step back and no longer resist, then there was nothing for the daughter to res push against, mm -hmm. right? Which is a lot of what's happening, right? That energy, particularly with teenagers, mm -hmm. right? right? It's, it's mm -hmm. just a lot of that push and pull. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, you know, assert themselves in certain ways. And when we push against it, that only causes them to become more assertive. Yeah, I remember that in my own life as a teen. Right. right. Many a time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so energetically, that's part of what happened. The mother just... Took a breath, right. step back, and like, okay. Right, and then the child ain't have nothing to push against or fight against. And it's like, oh, never mind. Never mind, I don't want to do that. Right. 
She goes on, I will give another example of sowing and reaping, which came in the most curious way. A woman came to me saying she had received a counterfeit $20 bill given <laughs> to her at the bank. She was much disturbed, for she said, the people at the bank will never acknowledge their mistake. I replied, let us analyze the situation and find out why you attracted it. She thought a few moments and claimed, I know it. I sent a friend a lot of stage money just for a joke. So the law had sent her some stage money for it doesn't know anything about jokes. I said, now we will call on the law of forgiveness and neutralize the situation. Christianity is founded upon the law of forgiveness. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of cause and effect. And the Christ within each and every one of us is our redeemer and salvation from all inharmonious conditions. You hear that? That's a beautiful uh, uh, reading and interpretation, right? That we understand that the Christ is not a person. The Christ is the consciousness that dwells within us. And so we have a power within us that allows us to free us from cause and effect. That's what I was talking about earlier. We don't just plant the wrong seeds and then it's like, oh, no. Right? This is technically you know, what, what the sin and shame story. It's like, oh, no. I just I planted these wrong seeds. I got to eat eat from this this tree right that i planted it doesn't taste good it's nasty forever and, and forever and ever and it's just <laughs> what's going my kids got to eat it and their kids got like no it's like as soon as you realize that you don't want this tree or you planted it for whatever reason you get to uproot it but that's that's symbolic of what the christ is within us right uh, freeing us from all inharmonious conditions so i said Infinite spirit, we call on the law of forgiveness and give thanks that she is under grace and not under law and cannot lose this $20, which is hers by divine right. Now, I said, go back to the bank and tell them fearlessly that it was given you there uh, by mistake. She obeyed, and to her surprise, they apologized and gave her another bill, treating her most courteously. So knowledge of the law gives us power to rub out our mistakes. Uh, humanity cannot force the external to be what we are not mm -hmm. what we are not okay if we desire riches uh, we must be rich first in consciousness for example a woman came to me uh, asking for asking treatment for prosperity she did not take interest in her household affairs and her home was in great disorder i said to her if you wish to be rich you must be orderly all people all in this well she believes all men with great wealth are orderly and order is heaven's first law i added you will never become rich with a burnt match in the pin cushion <laughs> She has sayings crack me up. Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> she had a good sense of humor and commenced immediately, putting her house in order. She rearranged furniture, straightened out bureau drawers, cleaned rugs, and soon made a big financial demonstration, a gift from a relative. The woman became herself herself became made over and herself keeps herself keyed up financially by being ever watchful of the external and expecting prosperity, knowing God is her supply. There's a lot of things here. I'm mm -hmm. reminded of um, Catherine Ponder and the dynamics, uh, dynamic law of prosperity, mm -hmm. um, because this is that making room, right? Many times, you know, uh, 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 Catherine Ponder in one of the headings in that book talks about, you know, cleaning up clutter leads to prosperity, right? And so sometimes, right, there's an orderliness that we can create. We can work on the external, right, which is also then reflected on the internal. Um, uh, similarly, it could have been, you know, giving away um, certain items and making space. It's like you want prosperity in your mm -hmm. life. You want, right? And then it's like, well, am I hoarding um, certain things? And so I need to make room for the new. That right. can also be in our gifts, skills, talents, and abilities. Right. I mean, this could be symbolic cleaning. Mm -hmm. How many things do we hold into onto in our closet that have a whole bunch of emotional charge, mm -hmm. that have a whole bunch of stories around? Mm -hmm. And so when we release them, forgive them, let mm -hmm. them go, give them away to someone that can use them that has no charge, mm -hmm. It just open. It just frees us up, and so it feels miraculous in mm -hmm. terms of what we think of as miraculous. But mm -hmm. it's just orderly. Yeah. That when you yeah. when you make room, when you release all the beliefs, all the energy, all the association around certain things, mm -hmm. that what fills that space has to be divine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely. it's just logical. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. So we move forward. Many uh, people are in ignorance of the fact that gifts and things are investments and that hoarding and saving invariably leads to loss. There is that 
scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to po- poverty. Um, so I love this. This is the King James Version. <laughs> yeah, um, but this is, this is Proverbs. This is Proverbs 11.24. And um, here in the New Revised Standard Translation, um, it makes much more sense. Some give freely, yet grow all the richer. Other withhold what is due and only suffer want. Makes sense. If you read the story of the, the, the talents, right, um, and it ends, the, the explanation of the parable says, and to, to uh, him who is his, uh, was given, um, even more, even, to him who has already received, even more will be given. But to, to him who does not have, um, I'm paraphrasing, you know, he will continue not to have, right? And so this is important. We, we talk so often about savings. Um, and, and when you understand thinking about money, that money has to have a purpose, mm-hmm. right? So we don't save for a rainy day because we recognize the law of cause and effect, right? If I'm saving for a rainy day, that's my cause. Mm-hmm. I must then, uh, I'm expecting, I'm looking for the rainy day, right? right? Um, and so you could, you could, um, you must give all of your savings a specific purpose. Uh, you can even create separate accounts um, to do that. But what's interesting also about circulating um, in, in any way, shape, or form, when we give freely, we grow all the richer, mm-hmm. right? It's a curious thing. Um, Buddha talks about it in his sermon on charity. Um, it's a very curious and, and wonderful thing that the person that gives freely becomes richer, right? But the person that withholds only suffers more want. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's like, well, if the person is keeping what they have, then they shouldn't suffer want. Right. It's counterintuitive to, right. for, to what we've been conditioned to believe about having, giving, mm-hmm. and receiving. Because mm-hmm. you can only give what you know you have. Mm-hmm. And the more you realize as you give more, give more, give mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. or, you know, put yourself out there in terms of your gifts, skills, and talents more, mm-hmm. the more you realize what you have. Mm-hmm. And that is the energy that you stay in. I have mm-hmm. this gift. Mm-hmm. I have this talent. Mm-hmm. And so I just get more of it. I get to see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. But when I don't, when I'm like, oh, this is this little thing. Right. Oh, this ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, everybody can do this. Mm-hmm. Then that's the energy that you stay in. Right. And so it makes sense, not just about financial um, abundance, but about everything. Everything. And we see this, you know, outpictured in nature. This is why nature thrives, right? Mm-hmm. The trees freely give up their leaves. The flowers freely give of their pollen. The bees freely give of that pollen that they co- collected to then, um, you know, uh, ultimately become honey, right? And and feeds the whole tribe, mm-hmm. right? right? And and so and and I mean, if you think about bees, like they're wealthy. Right. When you consider the ways that they create and the ways that they give Mm -hmm. and, you know, the pollen, they get more pollen than they need. But that cross pollinates and that's how they have more flowers for the next season. It's that's that's the principle. Mm -hmm. Right. Nature shows us that. Right. Right. And you might say, well, PYPG, you know, the environment is suffering right now. The environment is suffering because we believe in lack. Mm -hmm. We're the ones hoarding. We're the ones hoarding. We're Mm. the ones operating Mm. in in that way in the world. We're the ones Mm. taking everything from the earth. We're the ones, Mm -hmm. you know, that's why nature, Mm -hmm. it's operating in the belief that all is well. We're not. Yep, yep. She goes on, for example, I knew a man who wanted to buy a fur-lined overcoat. He and his wife went to various <laughs> shops, but there was none he wanted. He said they were all too cheap looking. At last, he was shown one the salesman said was valued at $1,000, but which the manager would sell him for $500 as it was late in the season. His financial possessions amounted to about $700. The reasoning mind would have said, you can't afford Ooh. to spend nearly all you have on a coat. But he was very intuitive and never reasoned. He turned to his wife and said, if I get this coat, I'll make a ton of money. So his wife consented weekly. About a month later, he received a $10,000 commission. The coat made him feel so rich, it linked him with success and prosperity. Without the coat, he would not have received the commission. It was an investment paying large dividends. If we ignore Uh these leadings to spend or to give, the same amount of money will go in an uninteresting or unhappy way. And it said the coat made him feel rich. Mm -hmm. We got to get full of the feeling. We got to get full of the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not that the coat was the only, it could have been anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was his belief about the coat mm-hmm. that made him feel rich. Mm-hmm. 
This is going back. We're talking about the, the lucky monkey, <laughs> right? Right. It's your belief about the thing. And so this also means, well, what if you don't have, in this case, the uh, uh, $500, right, to buy a fur-lined coat, right? What do you have, right? What do you have in your possession to conjure that feeling, right? Maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's um, as we read about a woman in a previous chapter, going to a, a restaurant, right, a nice restaurant, and, and you know, you can, you can afford that meal, mm -hmm. right? And that just puts you in a space and a posture. It's important mm -hmm. to have those things. Mm -hmm. um, I used to sort of beat myself up um, for a time um, because I would feel, you know, richer on payday, right? I, I would notice myself. I had, a, I had a, you know, bounce to my step, and, <laughs> and, and I used to judge that. Um, but what I, I, I came to the awareness around was, okay, how do I make use of that? Because I understand that at least right now, right, that, you know, the, the 15th and the last day of the month, I have an extra bounce in my step. So I'll make use of that and, and, and affirm on those mm -hmm. days my wealth and my prosperity, and I have more than enough, and I'm provided for, and there's a supply for every demand. That's beautiful, and I use that as a stepping stone. Right, right? so how can I develop that feeling exactly. at least one more day, at exactly. least three more days, right. at least, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so I have grown in consciousness so that one, multiple days are paydays, and to the point that I'm not looking now to the 15th um, to feel that. Um, I, I actually can live in that space and conjure that feeling tone, mm -hmm. right? And live and move into that feeling tone no matter what day of the week it is or, or the month it may be, right. right? But don't judge that, right? Make use of it right. if that's what moves you mm -hmm. um, to, to get into the feeling because mm -hmm. you need to get into that feeling. Right. And it's and it's that's where you also have some compassion. You're like, oh, I realize I used to operate that way. Mm -hmm. I know why I used to operate that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that. The energy that I had on those days, I now extend it to these days. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, that's just how you live. Exactly. And so life reflects that. Yep. There you go. Right. Um, and so she talks about you know this this story. I'm gonna <laughs> skip it. Um, but the, this idea writes the same amount of money will go in an uninteresting or unhappy way. Now, what she talks about here is ignoring, ignoring leadings. And she said that um, it was the man's intuition that led him to, to circulate his money in this way. Um, and so it is true that we have to tap in and, and to really be aware of where we're being led and guided to spend or to give our money. Mm -hmm. Because when we do ignore that, right, there's something within us that, 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 that wants to move this money through us. And of course, all the money that I use returns to me multiply. But if we ignore that, um, not as a punishment. Please don't take, like, not oh, I should have listened to my intuition, uh -huh. right? You could have listened to your, and right. you didn't, and right. that's okay. And so we have the opportunity to just laugh and see that, oh, the law works. The law, <laughs> right, the law works. Yeah, look oh, at, man. Look at yeah. that intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, next time. Mm -hmm. That's all. Choose again. Right. The next time I will know, because part, most of us have ignored our intuition for so long, we don't mm -hmm. even realize we have it. Mm -hmm. And we think that other people have more intuitive ability. Mm -hmm. And they might have developed it or be mm -hmm. more aware of it, mm -hmm. but we all have intuitive ability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've just denied it right. or looked for um, external validation, look for some sign in the world that mm -hmm. it was it was right, mm -hmm. as opposed to just following the leanings of spirit, as I like to say. Right. And so, you know, we don't I'm not reading the story because we don't well, we want to ensure that we're making use of the law, not from a place of fear. Like, mm -hmm. oh, no, let me circulate this money before it's stolen. Yeah, me. yeah. Let me make use of this money before I got to replace my tire right. unknowingly or, right. you know, unexpected bill shows up. That's not what we're saying, because yeah. in truth, the affirmative is let me use this money because I know that it multiplies. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm cause and effect, right? Mm -hmm. I know that I'm operating in this principle, this law of causation and causality. That's why I'm circulating this, mm -hmm. right? I know it's coming back to me. Um, that That's the way to think about it, right? Versus what you're trying to avoid, right? right. We talk about all, what you want versus what you don't want. You're it's, operating this way because of what you want. Right, and all that you're ever getting is information mm -hmm. so that you can make those adjustments mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your thinking and mm -hmm. in your experience. That's mm -hmm. all we're ever doing. Right. We're, we're learning how to really live cause and effect. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Not to reap the benefits of, of our negative. We're just learning how to use the law yep. in human form. Yep, yep. 
So we move on and she says, the law always stands back of us when we spin fearlessly with wisdom. <laughs> um, and she goes on, she, she talked about one of her students um, um, uh, was shopping with her nephew. The child clamored for a toy, which she told him she could not afford to buy. She realized suddenly that she was seeking lack and not recognizing God as her supply. That's important, right? Oh, I realize I forgot that God is my supply. Oh, I realize in this moment, I'm thinking that there are two powers instead of one, mm -hmm. right? So what would she do? She forgive herself. She set herself free. She <laughs> thought a new thought, remembered God is her supply. She bought the toy and on her way home, picked up in the street the exact amount of money she had paid for it, right? Our supply is inexhaustible and unfailing when trusted, but faith or trust must precede the demonstration. Mm -hmm. According to your faith, be it unto you. We just talked about that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for faith holds the vision steady, and the adverse pictures are dissolved and dissipated, and in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Faith holds a vision steady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about your life. When you're doubting, mm -hmm. you are not clear. Do you have all these other possible ways that it could work out? Mm -hmm. And it's not steady. You wobbling, as mm -hmm. Abraham would say. Mm -hmm. You're wobble. Mm -hmm. Faith, the mm -hmm. knowingness, mm -hmm. the surrender, mm -hmm. extraordinary trust holds that vision steady. Mm -hmm. And even when you can't see it, it's holding it steady. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering clearly when I see this story, I'm remembering um, when I sort of came to a, crystal clear understanding of this idea of having that we have to live in the consciousness of having mm -hmm. in order to have um, because I had started that morning and that day thinking about all of what I didn't have mm -hmm. I was thinking about the bills and responsibilities I had and thinking about all of the ways my bank account at that moment could not wasn't gonna feel it <laughs> right <laughs> right and so of course how did I feel I felt bad I felt like a failure I I was you know sad and worried and all of those things and um I started using I am affirmations, but what I remembered was that the I am must be met, married with the I have, because you can't know that you're these things unless you have these things. Mm -hmm. And it was out of that consciousness of having, it started to lift my spirit. And I went out and I took a walk and I, I circled around the neighborhood and on my way back, what did I find? Funds right there on the ground. Mm -hmm. And just like my mama taught me to, I stepped on it first <laughs> and looked around. <laughs> Nobody was in sight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I picked up my blessing, right? So um, th this is really just, it's, it's how it works. It's how mm -hmm. it works. Um, I think we just have a little bit left in the book. Yeah, touch. Um, she says, Jesus Christ brought the good news, the gospel, that there was a higher law than the law of cause and effect, and that um, and that, that law translates the law uh, of karma. Uh, it is the law of grace or forgiveness. It is the law which frees us from the law of cause and effect, the law of consequence, under grace and not under law. We are told that on this plane, we reap where we have not stoned. The gifts of God are simply poured out upon us. All that the kingdom affords is ours. This continued state of bliss awaits each of us who has overcome world thought, right? In the world thought there is tribulation, but Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The world thought is that of sin, sickness, and death. Um, he saw their absolute unreality and said, sickness and sorrow shall pass away, and death itself, the last enemy, be overcome. We now know from a scientific standpoint that death could be overcome by stamping the subconscious mind with the conviction of eternal youth and eternal life. I just want to say, asterisk, I don't know that we know that from a scientific standpoint. Mm -hmm. Maybe she means from a metaphysically scientific standpoint. Um, I'm not aware of any research that says that to be true, right? There's definitely, um, we know that the power of our thought um, absolutely has a profound effect on our health, mm -hmm. and then we could conjecture that mm -hmm. then it uh, um, affects uh, how much longer we live on the planet but mm -hmm. I just want to be right. clear because we don't yeah. want to create an, this this causation mm -hmm. that if we always think youth that and someone transitions before what we think is their time mm -hmm. that they did something mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. that is not true right um, that is definitely not true mm -hmm. Our eternal nature is eternal, and mm -hmm. if it inhabits a body and then another body and another mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. the energy that is eternal is what we're talking about. Exactly. 
exactly. Um, and this highlighted in yellow passage is powerful, right? We're told that on this plane, right, this is the plane beyond cause and effect, um, we reap where we have not sown, the gifts of God are simply poured out upon us, right? And this is, this is where we get into understanding, you know, the place of mastery, right? But of course, the master metaphysician um, is, is um, obedient to the law, right? Is working with something, right? So this is not, um, so often I think we want to get to this like independent place of like, you know, nothing bothers us and we don't have to answer anybody because we're just so powerful spiritually. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, there's actually greater responsibility on this plane, right? Once you understand um, the laws. Once you understand the laws. Um, mm -hmm. But it is true that from this perspective on this plane, it's the appearance that you're reaping where you have not sown, right? The gifts of God are just poured among, upon you, right? They're just everywhere you go, you're blessed. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the experiences all the time. It's just everywhere we go, we get the better seed or we didn't have reservations and we were supposed to have reservations, but they find a table for us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, people just, um, uh, you, you know, roll out the red carpet for mm -hmm. us strangers, right? This is part of that. It's living in that consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. The whole wide world says yes to me, right? The whole it's, wide it's, world says yes right? to it's, me. It's, it's, it's that thing that Maharishi Mahesh Yogi talks about. You just have the full support of nature. And the truth is we all have it. We just have so many things blocking us from seeing it and living from that place. Mm -hmm. Understandably mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Understandably so. Yeah. But the more you practice living in that place, the more having more of it you have, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. more of you, you experience. Absolutely. Now, does that mean that we always, no. Mm -mm. Does that mean that we don't forget? No. Right. But it does mean that we can bring ourselves back to mm -hmm. that awareness really quickly, or mm -hmm. we pull out a tool that will help us come mm -hmm. back to that awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So the end of the chapter, the subconscious being simply power without direction carries out orders without questioning. Working under the direction of the superconscious, the Christ or God within each and every one of us, the resurrection of the body would be accomplished. Uh, we would no longer throw off this body in death. It would be transformed into the body electric sung by Walt Whitman, for Christianity is founded upon the forgiveness <laughs> and of in sins um, <laughs> and the empty tomb, right? Um, and so there is a symbolic thing that she's talking about here. If we don't think about, you know, um, ourselves physically, but if we think about our lives and think about the ways that, right, taking the, the God idea, right, there are, there's absolutely, this is true, you've heard me teach and preach about it, right, that your body is listening to you, right, your cells are mm -hmm. listening to you, they respond to you, as we talked about health in the context of this pandemic, right, we, we talk from the standpoint of maintaining our good health, mm -hmm. right, and, and affirming that we are healthy now, right, and so continuing to be led and guided uh, into all ways and all truth um, to do that, right, knowing that source will, will provide um, those things that will, will benefit us, um, to continue to live in the reality that we see and know within our own consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's very important, it's yeah. very important. It's funny, I have Irene Cara singing in my head now. <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. So our next chapter is Casting the Burden. Um, we invite you to read that chapter. Uh, read and reread it again. If you feel the need to move forward, um, that is your ego, right? That is that is not God within you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was reminded today of uh, Pema Chodron who says, "Pick a path, any path, and go deeper." And I like to say, um, based on that, pick a text, any text, and go deeper. Mm -hmm. You could study this text alone for an entire year, right? You could dedicate one month to each chapter mm -hmm. and just keep digging in and digging in and, and just thinking about, you know, it's, it's trying to really embody, right? Um, try ingest it, right? And make it a part of your life so that you're living it, right? And so then there's so many things. That what's been, what's beautiful to me, even as we're rereading this, it's been some time, mm -hmm. but I recognize how having reread and reread this so much, it's like, oh, right, I do that. Or, oh, that's where that came from, mm -hmm. or you, right? This is what's what's so, so important, and so we want you to not just you know read a good text or have read a good text and check it off. Right. Oh, I read that. But embody the wisdom. Right. Right. Make use of it. Make use of it. Uh, and so, um, uh, in this moment, we it's time for giving. 
And so uh, you may have already seen the information on your screen throughout the, uh, um, the class, but uh, the information is here now. You can go to our website, celebrationsc.org forward slash give and give what feels good, or you can text to give 347-744-9500. Um, and it is a $10 minimum to text to give. Now we recognize and understand that we must give what feels good. We mm -hmm. must, that must be the consciousness behind our giving. All of that other stuff, shame, guilt, fear, um, obligation, mm -hmm. that stuff doesn't work and it does not give you the full benefit and blessing of this law of circulation. Now, law of circulation is just what we've been talking about, right? Cause and effect, right? What you're planting, mm -hmm. you receive, right? And knowing that as you plant, you have. Yes. So from that awareness, we give with joy. Mm -hmm. We give with clarity. We give with freedom. We give with the knowledge of having and knowing we will receive more. And so we affirm all the money that I use. All the money that I use. Returns to me multiplied. Returns to me multiplied. In a never-ending cycle. In a never-ending cycle. Of increase. Of increase. And enjoyment. And enjoyment. We love and appreciate you all. Thank you for your patience. I'm yes. so happy for the gift of technology that still allows us to get this class and this information to you. Uh, invite a friend excuse me come along and join us next week and we look forward to the next chapter casting the burden it's yeah. a good one right. and don't forget mm -hmm. next sunday is god talk sunday absolutely all right y'all be well love you